What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Cryptarch. Now, this was going to be a weekly indie newcomer. So, for those of you that only show up to the channel for weekly indie newcomer, this is your weekly indie newcomer. But I like the game so much that I wanted to do like an extended play session, I guess, where I played through the campaign. Now, if you haven't heard of Cryptarch, this game is an ass kicker. I played it for a couple hours last night and had a blast with it. Really found that the game was insanely difficult, but at the same time, really satisfying, really well put together. Its graphics are fantastic, the voiceovers are great, the lips on the little cartoons actually sync up with what they're saying. It's it's a game that somebody put a lot of effort into, but if you needed a description of what the game actually is, I would say that it's Space Hulk meets Armored Core meets, I don't know, a 2D perspective. It's an odd game and difficult to describe, but basically you're a salvage team that's been contracted to enter Derelicts and recover as much as you can from them and make as much money as possible before going into what is essentially a motherload derelict at the end of the game. It's a roguelike in the sense that if you run out of money, the game is over, so you might never make it to the last level if you run out of money by like the third or the fourth derelict, and money is at the seam and at the core of every single aspect of this game, so you will spend money on gear, you will spend money on bonuses and deployments and things like that, but I had a great time playing the game and so I wanted to show it off. I can virtually assure you that I'm going to play very, very badly here today. But I still wanted to show it to people, I wanted to make people aware of the game, because I do think that it's a really, really good game. So anyways, without further ado, let's play some Cryptarch. I know you didn't come here to listen to me talk for 35 minutes about what the game is, it's much easier to show you anyways. So I will show you mine right now. I'm gonna go with Slot 2, this was just to bypass the tutorial. The tutorial though, it's really badass, it's super like cinematic and it has all kinds of cool stuff going on. You should totally play the tutorial just for the storyline, it's pretty sweet. No tutorial! Alright, so welcome to the beginning. Actually, what I need to do right now is I need to adjust the sound effects because the music is way, way louder than the voice volume. And so in general, I would recommend you adjust that at the beginning of your game. Right now, the sound EQing is a little bit off. The music starts out way too loud to the point where you can't hear the voiceovers most of the time once you're actually in a mission. So this is where you select. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a little track. That's how long we have until we get to the final Cryptark mission. While we're trying to get there, we're going to be salvaging smaller ships to get newer guns, newer gear, newer armor, all that fun stuff. And so these are the ones that we have available. We have the Envoy, we have the Scrapyard, the little ones and twos off to the left next to them are the level of the Derelict. It's how hard it is. So if you wanted a really, really easy mission, you could go after something like the Scrapyard right here. Which actually I think would be a really, really good... That's probably a good compromise if you don't want to play a super hard mission first, but at the same time you still want to make some money because it gives 81k for a level 1 mission, which is pretty good. Over on the right hand side you'll see a synopsis of the mission. It'll have the difficulty, the reward, your goal time. That's not a goal time by the way, that's like a, you have to beat the mission in that amount of time. It's a hard limiter. If you go past the 420 in the mission, so I'm not a big fan of the time limits. Some people are, some people are not. But if you go past the time limit, you start to bleed money really, really rapidly. And so you kind of don't want that to happen. The bonuses down there in the bottom, that's extra money that you get paid for doing special things. So for example on here, if I don't destroy the sentry turrets, I end up getting 18,000 extra dollars. If I don't use a supply pod, I get 18,000 extra dollars. If I don't destroy the alarm system, or if I do destroy the alarm system, I get $18,000. And so those are all going to be things that you want to keep in the back of your mind when you're planning out how you want to do your mission and the way that you want to orchestrate your infiltration. For right now, taking a look around, what you really want to look at is tech advances in the first couple missions because down at the bottom 
over, I can't show you because I don't have a mouse, but at the bottom right it says tech advances. Those are actually like research and you want to find those inside the ships because they unlock new guns for you. And so every time you grab one of those, you can donate them to arms companies and arms companies will essentially unlock their wares for you for free. Well, not really for free, but they will make more powerful weaponry available to you as a trade because of it. And so I would highly recommend it. I don't know if I want to do a level 2 or if I want to do a level 1 first. This one over here, it looks like it's got a repair node. So the little icons on the system scan part right there, that's telling you what subsystems exist inside of there. So that one has a core, it has an alarm system, it has a door lock system, it has a drone manufacturer, it has a repair bay, it has a turret sentry, and it also has a shield bay. This one over here appears to have much of the same thing, except it swapped out some of the supplementary systems for drone manufacturing. So this one would actually be more of a shootout, because there's going to be lots and lots of drones in there. Like a straight stupid amount of xenomorph drone hybrid type. They're weird. They're like biological drones. They're all creepy looking. They kind of look like, you know, Giger-esque monsters. They're a little bit strange. I think our best bet is probably just to go for the scrapyard. The $97,000 would be really, really nice, though. Destroy the drone factories for 23000 Go in with six max hull and only spend $60,000 on your loadout. I think this one is actually pretty doable. Eh, I'm so bad at the game, though. That's really what I'm weighing this against. Let's do this one, and if we fail, we fail. How about that? Although long dormant and lightly guarded, the multiple factory systems of this industrial hulk are quick to restore it to fighting strength. Off we go. And so this is actually going to put us into the active game now. Okay, so here is our little guy. We control pretty simply. I mean, there is going to be a learning curve. You can play it with the gamepad or you can play it with the keyboard and mouse. I found that both work equally well. It just depends what you like better. Left click is going to make me shoot machine guns. Yeah! That's the type of machine gun that I like to fire. Right click is going to make me use my shield. I think the spike is going to be... Mm, I can't remember. The spike is... It's not that right there. That's going to make me shoot a grenade if I press F. That's going to make me charge with the space bar. There's a way to shoot the spike. Oh, it's the middle mouse button. That's what it is. So basically, I can use my arm spike to stab things with the middle mouse button if I wanted to. So as you can see, the game is very much an action roguelike. This is a game that kind of reminds me of a lot of the SNES side-scrolling shooters and things like that from back in the day. Maybe some of the games like... God, what was the name of that game? They had E-frames or whatever. I can't remember what the game was called. We interact with stuff by pressing E, but either way, I like anything with giant hulking armor suits that I can fly around in. So we wanted to go in with a maximum of six hull. So we can tailor our hull as much as we want for the amount of money we want to spend on this deployment. I'm going to take it down to six so that we get that, mo that bonus money, and we're going to save money on our deployment cost because down at the bottom it'll say total 77k. That's how much money we're spending on all the stuff that's equipped on our ship right now before we infiltrate. I'm going to get rid of the spike because that's $5,000 saved. I Can I lower the amount of grenades that I have? Like if I drop that down to there, that takes us to 62. Uh, I may just scrap the bombs all together for right now. Although they would be nice for wiping out some of the drone manufacturers. Let's go ahead, I'm going to wipe them out completely for right now. So the total money spent at the moment is 52k. I'm going to try and get us as close to 62k. Or I'm sorry, to 60k as possible. By taking this up, it looks like I can afford to spend $8,000. So I might be able, what does that cost right there? So I could take it up to 2,000 rounds, and that'll get us right underneath 60k for the loadout bonus. That's going to cut it a little bit close as far as ammunition is concerned. You're going to do a lot of shooting in this game. I hate to disappoint you, but there is going to be a lot of shooting. This is not a sneaky game. This is a game where you shoot the hell out of everything that moves if you really, really, really want to survive. And not only that, you shoot the hell out of things, but you've also got to choose very carefully what you want to shoot the hell out of. Can I actually take that off entirely? It's not costing me anything right now. Although technically, once I get inside, I could leave that equipped and I could try to reload it maybe. Hmm, I could bring a different gun. It costs 18k, that one costs 20k. The zip gun's pretty cool, so there's a lot of different options here. You can buy shotguns, you can get machine guns, there's zip guns, there's different melee weapons, there's thunder hammers and things like that, there's explosive grenades, both sticky and bouncy varieties, there's shields, there's energy weapons. There are lots and lots and lots of random things in this game that you can play around with. 
So I can do an energy blast. Well, maybe I should do that instead of bringing more ammunition. Drop that down by a little bit so that it's like max 60k. Ooh, that looks good right there. I never played around with the blaster though. What does it do? So let's say that I wanted to use... Oh. Okay. So it's just like an infinite ammo energy. Oh, okay. So it's a holdout weapon. I probably should have thought about bringing that before. So instead of putting that on my left bumper, I would actually prefer putting that on my right button if I can. That'll make my life a little bit easier. There we go. And so now, much better. Okay, so I've got that on my middle mouse button now, so that'll make my life a little bit easier. I think it should reload us when we walk out of the gate over here. The second part of this is that you want to plan out your excursion. And so taking a look at the enemy derelict, these little things right here are doors that are unlocked. These right here are the drone manufacturers. We have to destroy those in order to get the $25,000 bonus. However, if it takes us a long time to get it done, it's not going to be worth it because we're going to run out of time and bleed all of our money out. So I'm thinking the way that we want to infiltrate is going to be through the top right here. We're going to want to hit both of these drone factories. They're level 1 out of 3, and so they produce a drone every 5 seconds, which means that we really, really, really need to hit that thing hard. The alarm system is going to make this a little bit more complicated because it shoots infrared beams out all over the place while you're in here, and if you trigger those, you are going to be in a world of hurt, so that's probably going to have to go. We have to destroy the shield before we can go after the core. So all things considered, I think we're probably looking at a full clear right here. We're going to have to hit everything really, really hard if we want to get the bonus money. Alternatively, alternatively, we could hit the alarm system, we could hit the shield system, grab that tech, that tech, that tech, and that tech, destroy the core and be the hell out. And if we do that, we would forego the $25,000, but we might be able to get extra money. You get $1,000 per second that you're over the goal time. And so if we could finish with a minute and a half left, you'd be looking at a pretty solid bonus. So, it kind of depends what we want to do here. These red ones are locked doors, and you can't really do anything with those until you get a little bit further in. These are key terminals. They give you a key so that you can open one of the red doors. So you kind of want to plan your way into the base. We're going to need that key right there before we go after the shield. You don't lose time for planning this, so please, plan it out. Plan it out very, very carefully, otherwise bad things may happen to you. Alright, so let's go in through the top. How far away are we? Pretty far away. Alternatively, what I could think about doing is we could go through that gate, we could wipe out the shield, and then work our way up and left and get all this stuff on the back nine. Let's do that instead. I'm going to go out to the shield first, since it's closer. That'll get us some tech at the beginning, too, but I got to grab that key on the way in, so remind me. Okay, does that reload my guns right there? Yeah, reload my guns for me real quick. Let's do this thing. I never said that I was good at this game. Remember that, that I gave you a caveat. I never said I was any good at this. Oop, I gotta go up. Alright, so the $60,000 just ticked in. From now on, everything is finalized. The timer is running, and we have stuff to do. Let's grab this key real quick. I'm gonna try and not necessarily, like, narrate for you. Oh, shit, we almost got wiped out right there. Let's go ahead and wipe him out real fast. I'm trying to save ammo along the way, but I need to go down and around this way. I'm probably gonna try and grab this tech right here before we go further. So we've unlocked the tractor beam by grabbing that tech. I'm going to open this guy up because I have a key. And then this over here. Let's get rid of you real quick. You can use a shield to block laser blasts if you want to. So keep that in mind along the way. Hopefully we don't run into too many drone problems in here. I would actually recommend using the blaster maybe for this. And so this is our new enemy right here that we're going to have to deal with. Let's wipe that out real fast. That's in control of all the shields and every... Oh, we got shot. Down with our hull. Like it's oppressing the peasants. There we go. So the shield generator system has now been knocked out. We can actively attack the core. I'm going to grab that. It's going to be a saw arm, which is pretty sweet. I see, said the blind man, as he picked up the hammer and saw. I'm going to try and go down here. We got another key terminal, but I don't know if I need one. We can jump back into the map at any point, and the time does not run while you're in here. So don't worry about it too heavily. The next thing we need to hit... Oh, we needed the drone manufacturer. Shit. The best way to get over there is going to be to go around the horn. So we'll grab the key right there. We'll go this way. Ignore him for right now. He is irrelevant to our situation. We're going to go all the way down and around. We've already burned up a minute, though, so I'd rather do this quickly rather than slowly. We'll go in through here. I'm going to try and go for the drone manufacturing bonus, which might be able to offset. So we got to attack that thing right there. 
if you actually wanted to damage it. Don't waste your ammunition. Come on. Come on. There we go. So the first drone manufacturer is down. I'm going to grab the key terminal while we're over here, and we've been teleported by a flux. That's unfortunate, but it didn't. Actually, it probably helped us. It, we lost a tech. No, no, we didn't actually. Okay, so it teleported us closer to our objective. That's good. So let's go up here and we'll grab this tech advance as we come around the corner. We got the mortar cannon. That'll be pretty sweet. We've got another drone manufacturer up here. Watch out for the alarm system. It is going to be trying to take us out. It hears the gunshots and everything else, so just be careful about it. See if we can... Ah, I didn't get him right there. we got to get all three of these, though, for the $65,000 bonus. We've only used up 300 rounds of ammunition, which is really, really good for us. You don't want to get sucked into that. Please try not to. I'm really, really endeavoring not to get sucked into that abyss. The game does get harder, by the way. This is like a gimme mission. You should always take, like, a level 2, maybe, on the first mission, because it's a bit of a gimme. And you're going to need the extra money anyways. Okay, so we didn't get teleported into the void. The next thing we need to wipe out, I think that's a security bot right there. So we need to get rid of the security system now. This is going to open up, allowing us access so that we can shoot it along these little cracks right here. But watch out for the little red beams. Don't get hit by those. They will ruin your day. They don't hurt, but they do summon like 9 million things that want to murder you. And so there goes the security system. How much time do I have left? Two and a half minutes to get this done. Let's grab the tech advance. We got the flamethrower. These are actually upgraded versions of weapons, too, so you kind of want to grab those. They'll make, your, they'll make your later life easier. I already had a key, but I'm going to grab this one right here, because why not? Open this one up. It's time to fight with the core and make ourselves a little bit of cash. But first, I'm going to get rid of his escort, because I don't feel like getting shot in here. And so if you can, I would highly recommend just unloading on this damn thing. Like, kill it as quickly as possible. I would like the... Oh, we set off an alarm. That's not good. So now that there's an alarm coming, we need to finish this off right now before the security guards arrive. If we can make this happen, our life will be much easier. Although I think we disabled the alarm system, so we should be good. I don't think anything's actually going to... This little turret over here is just wrecking my day and upsetting me deeply. There we go. Core is neutralized. Chain reaction is shutting down the other security elements. We'll call the salvagers to come and cash out. Good work. Good work indeed. That was pretty much the definition of a perfect mission. So there's our 97 grand. Secured. Payment will be wired to your accounts, Captain. Stand by for salvage teams. Well, look at that. We unlocked the fix 10. So I didn't talk about consumables, but there are consumables in this game too. And so we got an all objective bonus right there, which is like, boom, peanut butter and jam. We got paid today. We got paid today, my friends. We made, when was the last time you made $354,000 in five minutes? Hey. Because we just did it out here in space by taking some risks. Let's jump back into the map. We're going to go to the second system now. In the second system, we're going to want to take a look at what's available. We have a level 1 envoy, which would actually be pretty easy. Take into account the secondary objectives, though, too, along the way. Because sometimes there's no point taking on a mission that's going to be impossible for you, given your current kit out. Or, let's say for this guy right here, the level 3. We go after the level 3 and... We complete the mission, but we don't get any of the bonuses. We go over time, and we only make 80k. Well, compare that to the 69k you could make right here, plus the added 54k for the bonuses. You could actually end up making more money if you do an easier mission better. And so just kind of play to your strengths. If you're not good at the game, try to maximize profits by being careful. Now, because we don't have time for another mission, I'm going to go ahead and break it off right here. Some of these episodes might be a little bit short. That's how the game plays. I'm probably just going to cut maybe three or four of these. Consider this your weekly indie newcomer. I liked this one so much that I did a full playthrough of it. I will see you all next time. The game is called Cryptarch. My name is Splattercat, and I will see you all later. Hi, do everybody.